Cheers. Welcome back. It's Frankie. Blah, blah, blah. It's now 10 p.m. on a Saturday and I just put my makeup on for the first time. And I probably look a little crazy because I'm not good at doing makeup. So anyway, welcome back to my tipsy book club, book review, whatever. This month I am reviewing Ready Player One, which is about to come out in theaters as a Steven Spielberg movie, which is going to be awesome. Um, but I just wanted to review it because I had not read it yet and it is pretty dang good book. So the basic premise of Ready Player One is that it is 2045, so it is about 25 years, 25 plus years in the future. Almost everything is online now. Um, you can have full body avatars. People don't leave their homes anymore. Um, it's, the earth sounds like it's in dire straits. There's nowhere else to move. Um, our main character, Wade, um, lives with his aunt in the stacks, which are basically mobile homes stacked on top of each other. And I think his aunt is like the sixth or something in a layer. Um, so like the book, the cover, there's the stacks of like the mobile homes and RVs and stuff. Um, pretty insane, very unsafe. I hope this never happens to anyone. Um, but yeah, so Wade lives with his aunt. It's about 2045. Um, kids can still go to school in person, but Wade dealt with some bullying, I believe, and decided to transfer into um, a public school online where you still have to sit in a class. Your avatar has to be present. Um, there are safeguards in place so that you're not like surfing the web, doing things while you're supposed to be in class paying attention. The premise of the story is that, um, basically kind of, it's like as if Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak had just continued their dominion with Apple into just the internet at large, but kept it like free and open, kind of how it is now or how it should remain net neutrality we're looking we're watching people in power Ugh, whatever anyway not getting political um so these two these two guys i can't even remember their names right now um have kind of just furthered the world of online um it started you know kind of small as like massive it's a massive multiplayer online game but it just kind of spiraled into you can go to school and you can build worlds and like it's crazy it sounds awesome part of me hopes that that's kind of in the future and not too far away but but one of these guys dies, the other one is kind of stepped back. So it's like Woz in our world, it's like Steve Wozniak stepped back and then Steve Jobs dies. Um, and the guy that hadn't stepped back, God, I can't remember his name. I really should have written it down. Um, has created this huge riddle. Basically, so some, if someone solves it, can basically inherit all of his belongings and um, hold in the company. It was, it was crazy. You should read it. Um, and Wade has like followed this guy. Has it's just crazy. So this guy, all of this kind of started in the '80s. So there's tons of '80s references galore. Hello, Stranger Things. We love the 80s. Wade goes on this giant Easter egg hunt. Let me start over. Halliday is his name. 
not the Steve Jobs esque character. Halliday is his last name. Um, Halliday dies, sets up this whole situation, Easter egg hunt. He's like Willy Wonka. Like I was, I literally wrote it in my notes. Halliday is the 21st century Willy Wonka. So he set up these three keys, the crystal key, the silver key and the jade key. I'm totally wrong on that. I can't remember. But it's called the Oasis. The internet conglomerate thing is the Oasis. Everyone goes into the Oasis. They plug in. They do their things. They play their games. They go to school. Blah, blah, blah. What have you. Super fun. Sounds awesome. Sounds kind of scary too. Um, but there's this other company called IOI, and I'm sure the book explains what that stood for, but all you need to know is IOI. Super bad, not good. They want to win this game so that they can control the internet and make people pay out the wazoo. Um, and or they're basically like the internet police. They sound horrible. They are horrible. Um, anyway. Um... Halliday was kind of just kind of super standoffish. I wrote in my notes, he sounds like a Sheldon Cooper. So if anyone out there is a Big Bang Theory fan, it's like if Sheldon Cooper just forgot theoretical physics or whatever the hell, string theory, and went into just further developing the internet and making it completely badass and awesome. So without getting too spoilery, um, our main character, Wade, has, spends the first part of this book, um, in school, playing with riddles. The game, this Easter egg hunt starts and nobody can solve the first riddle. So it's several years later and Wade is like, I'm going to try to pick this up again and figures out the first riddle pretty quickly. And then the book just like completely takes off from there. Um, that was one of my kind of complaints was that the first part of this book is really slow because you're learning the mechanics of the Oasis and there's a lot to learn. Um, so it's, it's not without reason when you're reading it, it's very frustrating. But once you get to part two, everything takes off and it's insane. And it's like this roller coaster ride. I could barely put it down. Um, it was really good um but wade um runs into an avatar while he's in there solving the first riddle uh. oh my god here's to more burps wade runs into this other avatar that he had followed kind of along. She had a blog. He had kind of followed along her journey to solve this riddle as well. And he runs into her while he's solving the puzzle. She's like, oh my gosh, I thought I was the only one. She solves it right after him. And there's like a game board and, um, you know, within an hour, people are bombarding him. Um, he kind of takes a step back. He has a friend H that he communes with pretty regularly. Um, and I was like, what the hell is this person's name? Because when you're reading it, it's spelled A-E-C-H. And I finally go, oh, H. Um, but H figures it out because of kind of the mechanics of Wade's avatar is stuck on one planet. And because of the knowledge that H has about Wade, um, H is the third person to figure this all out. And then it's just mass chaos. IOI starts to figure it out because of everything. And then it's just a mass swarm to this one spot on this planet. And like I said, that's when it completely takes off. It's insane. I'll finish this really fast because my battery is dying and I need to order a backup. Um, so like I said, part two, it just takes off. IOI tries to hire Wade um, into their cohort so 
that they that he can help figure the other two riddles out and find the other two keys he basically is like Fuck no bro um and they try to kill him and it's it just really gets totally effed up um wade has to move it's insane um how the internet this oasis the ioi oh it's so good pick it up really quit taking notes after the ioi tries to hire wade because it got so good and i didn't want to actually put the book down to start taking notes I'm not drunk i'm just like super pumped about this book i'm sorry trying to beat my battery it's another couple months Wade goes into a depression I, part of what took me out of the book was part of Wade's depression talking about things you can do with the Oasis you can get like sex dolls in real life and then interact with them in the Oasis and I was just like I mean do we really need this kind of information we probably could have done completely without it but it's such an amazing story one of the big reviews on the back is that it's like harry potter for grown-ups there are aspects that are definitely harry potter for grown-ups but i think the best comparison is like grown-up willy wonka on the most advanced internet you can think of it's really good um think of the keys as golden tickets i guess um but it's really good you're basically trying to solve these riddles um using a ton of 80s references which is really fun um wade talks about watching all of um halliday's favorite 80s movies like say anything and listening to his favorite music and it's like a combination of everything good about the 80s and what the future of the internet could become which is a lot of fun to put those things together in a willy wonka fashion you know high stakes because it definitely gets high stakes um story the movie looks fantastic steven spielberg there's a lot of spielberg references throughout the book because hello spielberg i feel like the 80s and 90s and i mean hell it's 2018 spielberg is still owning the planet in movies um i would give it four and a half out of five stars because it took a while to get into the first part's kind of slow learning the mechanics like i said but it's just so good um and i'm really excited to see this cast come together and see the twists and turns and the unexpected um pieces of it um who h turns out to be all of that how that all comes together i think it's going to be awesome i'm really excited um to see these um four main characters come together four and a half five out of five stars really like this book um next month's book is potentially 1984 it's taking me forever to read it um i'm simultaneously reading the hard copy and listening to it on audible it's my first ever audiobook so come back in a few weeks when hopefully I have finished 1984. I don't know. Have you read player? Have you read? Oh my God. How hard is that to say? Have you read ready player one? Um, what was your favorite part? Who's your favorite character? Are you super pumped to see it in theaters in the next week or so? Um, leave me a comment down below give me a big thumbs up to let me know you like these videos um, check out some of my other videos um, I did an unboxing of a stitch fix a few weeks ago and it's doing really well um, so I'm thinking about finding like a loot crate type subscription box to subscribe to to do unboxing and get my April stitch fix i will do that um i'm also vlogging so check out any of my videos like and subscribe let me know what your favorite part of the book is and um i'll see you next time bye